Well, this is another update by USGS geologists concerning the recent activities of uh, geothermal and hydrothermal activities. Yellowstone eruption, explosion, how a geyser gone bad caused hydrothermal explosion. This is by Callum Hort on uh, Express UK. The Yellowstone supervolcano researchers witnessed a geyser gone bad as they explored the National Park, and this is what the USGS revealed during their public lecture. Now we know that there has been a tremendous change in geothermal activity recently. For example, the steamboat geyser erupted 40 times since it reactivated last year. It erupted 30 times last year, and already this year it has erupted 10 times. This is today's article. Yellowstone Volcano, as we know, last erupted about 630,000 years ago. That was a Category 8 eruption. We had a lot of smaller ones since then. Uh, the, some say they, that it erupts about every 6,000 years. Others say that uh, Category 7 would be erupting every 1,000 years and that it has had at least 50 lava flow uh, eruptions. So uh, you hear all these new things coming out every time they come up with new statements concerning Yellowstone. Now this latest, uh, they say located, uh, uh, the, uh, of course the volcano located inside Yellowstone National Park is of great interest uh, to the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, since it is a supervolcano, one of the quite a few actually that we have in the United States. Um, Yellowstone uh, to the southwest has the Long Valley Caldera about 500 miles off and south, directly south, it has the Valles Caldera in New Mexico. Uh, and there's a lot of other volcanic and lava fields surrounding the whole of Yellowstone. I don't know, you know, is it the same? Is it one and the same? I have no idea because they also came up recently with the fact that Yellowstone is two and a half times larger than they thought it was that it uh, extends all the way down to Mexico. So from Yellowstone to Mexico, that's the one uh, half of the diameter, and the other diameter would be uh, to up, to make, up to Canada, to Hudson Bay. So uh, they're interested in what's happening and the potential to cause huge devastation in the US, of course. Jacob Lowenstein, the leading scientist in charge of monitoring Yellowstone, reveals how one group got more than they expected during an exploration. And speaking at a public lecture in 2014, Lowenstein said, Philetus Norris was the second superintendent at Yellowstone, and he had gone the good, he had the good fortune of witnessing a hydrothermal explosion. It was a geyser gone bad. Rocks were thrown into the air, and he had a great quote about his experience. A hydrothermal explosion occurs when a superheated water trapped below the surface of the earth rapidly converts from liquid to steam. And Lowenstein uh, continues to explain, he said, the pool was considerably enlarged. Its immediate border swept entirely clear of all movable rock. And he explained uh, in an audiovisual presentation concerning the uh, explosions at the Norris Geyser uh, Basin. That's where we have the steamboat geyser. And he went on to say, enough of which had been hurled or forced back to form a ridge from knee to breast high at a distance of 20 to 50 feet from the ragged edge of the yawning chasm, a very alternative quote, but essentially describing the hydrothermal explosion. Mr. Norris, who in turn had the geyser named after him, was a key figure in establishing the Yellowstone National Park. By the time he left in 1882, there were five times as many roads and twice as many trails. While superintendent, he published numerous reports on the mountain peaks and the basins, 
but he was not the only explorer to witness the force of Yellowstone's first hand. In 1871, Ferdinand Vern der Veer Haydn led a team of 50 keen geologists on the first exploration of the Yellowstone volcano. Lowenstein revealed during the same lecture how the team gathered information on the supervolcano. He said in 2014, Ferdinand Haydn was one of the people who ran the expedition that went through Yellowstone. This was geological survey started about 10 years later. Haydn brought along William Henry Jackson, a photographer, and Thomas Morin, a painter. They collected samples, they documented what uh, they were seeing, and they did it both through photography and paintings. They were sent back to Washington and were instrumental in having Congress set aside Yellowstone as a national park. Lovenstein also revealed how Mr. Hayden realized it was, of course, a volcanic area. And um, he added he recognized it was a volcanic area and he knew it was not long, too long in the geological past that it was active. He put it a little bit older than it actually is, and so he recognized that the hot springs and water were related to the volcanic system, of course. He and his colleagues camped on the north side of Yellowstone Lake, and they experienced another remarkable thing that we know about Yellowstone, that there are a lot of earthquakes. The experience is what we now call an earthquake swarm, where they were awakened in the middle of the night by a series of shocks that shook the trees. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.